Do you want to learn how you can set up integration tests so that you can test the full scope of your API endpoints? In this video, that is exactly what I'm going to show you how to do. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding, where our aim is to make you into the developer that you want to be. In this episode, we're going to be looking at integration testing. This is different from the last episode where we looked at unit testing, as integration testing is a much higher level test. These tests are testing the whole API endpoint. This is really good as it is ensuring that whenever someone makes a request to your API, you're always going to get back the same response. This is good for catching when you make changes inside your application and that may have an effect on the outcome of the API endpoint. If these tests fall over because there is a change in the response, it means that you also need to make a change in your front end code or into whoever consumes these APIs. So what we're going to do now is jump into the code and I'll show you how we can set up these integration tests to ensure your APIs stay consistent. Now that we're in the code, we can start creating some tests so that we can test the full integration of these endpoints. To do this, we're going to create a new folder. So I'm going to use make directory and I'm going to call it z underscore tests. The reason I've called it z underscore tests is the fact that it then puts it at the bottom of these folders, which is just easier for me. In here, we're going to create a new folder and call it lambdas. We're also going to create a new folder and call this test utils. As in this episode, we're going to be creating a couple of utilities that make testing all of our endpoints much easier. We're going to start by going into our lambdas and creating a new file. And the file we're going to be testing up here First, we're going to be testing the create player score.js. So we're going to call this create player score.int.test.js. Inside here, we're going to start by describing what this test suite does. So describe. And in this test suite, we're going to be running the create player score integration tests. Perfect. So now that we're in here, we want to first test that the API exists. So test that it should take a body and return an API gateway response. And for this test, this is going to be an asynchronous test. So before the function, we need to say async. And in here, we now are ready to start creating our tests. To do that, we first have to call our function. So const res equals await as this is an async and then create player score dot handler and in here we're going to be passing an event as would be handed to you through API gateway. We've defined this func well we've called this function but we haven't imported it. So at the top of the file we need to import it so const create player score equals require and this is going to be two directories down so dot dot slash dot dot slash 
then into lambdas and into endpoints create player score. Now that we have this, we are passing in the player score, the event to the create player score, but we haven't defined the event yet. So here we're now going to create a const event equals something. So the event for API Gateway is rather large and rather complicated. So we're going to create a utility that allows us to quickly and easily generate API Gateway events. So that's going to be called event generator, which takes an object. And the only thing we're going to be adding to this is a body. And in here, I'm going to have a name of Tom and a score of 43. Now, this event generator doesn't currently exist. So what I'm going to do is head over to our test utils and create a new file and call this event generator.js. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy the code for this from a different file and paste it in here and talk you through what is happening. So this API gateway request takes an object which has a body, method, path, query string object, path parameters object, and a stage variables. Then it creates this request object. If we pass in a body, it stringifies the body, else it's null. And then as we're going through here, stuff like the path parameters are either the object that we've passed in as path parameter object or null. And the same thing for the query string. Most of the values inside this object I've set to be an empty string, but this is the exact format of the messages and the events that you'll be receiving from API Gateway. If you find that you're doing some testing where you need one of these parameters to be filled, you can scroll up, add it to your API Gateway request object, so the object that has the parameters passed in, and then down wherever you need it, just declare that value. I've done this to be as flexible as possible. So for example, I don't need to pass in any of these variables if I don't want to. It will create a generic object elsewise. Back in our create player score integration tests, we can now get ready to test that. So const event generator equals require dot dot slash test utils slash event generator. So now we have an event generator which generates this full API gateway event, which we're passing into the create player score handler. Now that we've done that, we can start creating our expectations. So expect res to be defined. That is our first assumption. And we also expect that it is an API gateway response. So expect. And here we're going to use a, another of our test utilities, which we're going to make. So we're going to call this validators dot is API gateway response. And you pass that function the response. And we expect this validator to return true or false. So in this case, we want it to be true. So now we need to go and make this API gateway responses. So jump into test utils and create a new file called validators 
index.js. And in here, we're now going to create a set of validators. The first one we're going to create is the one we have just used, is API Gateway Response. This takes a response, and then we can do some logic on there. The first thing we're going to do is get the headers, the status code, and the body off the response. So const body headers and status code equals response. After that, we now need to check that all of these exist. So if there is not a body or if there's not headers or if there is not status code, we're going to return false. Next, we know that status code needs to be a number. So if type of status code does not equal a number, we can return false again. And what we're going to go do is go through all of these. So the body, we know that it should have been stringified. So if the type of body does not equal a string, again, we're going to return false. And lastly, if the headers are not correct, we also want to return false. And here, we're going to use another utility in here. So not so if not is correct headers, and we're going to pass the headers in there. And if this is not correct, if this does not return true, we're going to return false. And lastly, if all of these have passed, we're going to return true. So what we're going to do now is create this is correct headers. So const is correct headers. We get past the headers. And I'm going to copy the code from another file for this test. So in here, we're saying if the content type does not is not application JSON, if the access control method is not star, or the access control origin is not star, return false for any of those, else return true. If you send back different headers, you can change these, as well as adding more validation for this API gateway response. If you know there is going to be more detail inside your response. Last thing we need to do in this file is export to all of this. So module.exports is an object, and we're going to export both the API gateway response and the is correct headers. Now that we've saved this file, we can close it and the event generator. And now we need to import these validators from that validator file. So const validators is require dot 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 slash test utils slash validators. If we save that, we can now see that validators is working and we're set up like that. Now what we can do is we can run our first test. So if we run jest, then this will try and test all of this. As we can see here, we have passed three tests and we have passed 10 uh, three test suites, and we've passed 10 tests. That means this new test suite 
is passing because before we were on two test suites and nine total tests. As you can see in here, we're also console logging the event out inside this player score. So what I'm going to do is quickly go back into create player score and comment out this for now. I'm going to do the same thing in the get player score just to make our logging easier. Now that we have our first test created, we can move on to some more testing. The next test is going to be that it should return a 200 with the player if everything passed is valid. The player is valid. Again, this is going to be an async function because it's an async test. In here, we're going to create const event equals, and we're going to use our event generator again. Inside here, we're going to copy that body from the first test, but we also need to pass in a path parameter. Inside our create player score up here, we expect there to be a path parameter of ID. So in our test, we have a path parameters object. On that object, we have an ID. And this ID, I'm going to go with, it can be anything because you don't reference anything to this at the moment. And we now have this event. Next, we need to run the create player score. So const res equals await create player score dot handler, pass in the event, and then move on to our expectations. As we said in the description, it should return a 200. So expect res dot status code to be a 200. And we also expect the body to be something. And because we have stringified the body, we can now say that we are going to JSON parse that. So const body equals JSON dot parse res dot body. Now that we have the body, we can say that we expect the body to equal. And the reason we're using to equal here is because the order of to equal doesn't matter, whereas the order of to be does. And we don't know the order of the parameters that are going to come back in this object. So the response from the body, we expect there to be a new user and this new user to have a name of Tom, to have a score of 43 and an ID of this. If we save all of that and we run jest in our terminal, we'll see the tests run and what will happen is there will be one failure. If we scroll up in our failure, it's because the missing required key of table name in the parameters request to DynamoDB. If we go into our common DynamoDB, inside right, we expect a table name to be passed in. And in our create player score, when we write the table name, when we write the user, sorry, we pass in a table name. This table name is actually defined by the process environment variables. When we run jest, there are no environment variables set like this. Whereas when we deploy it, there will be. So what we can do is we can actually set our own environment variables. 
So we're going to copy the table name and the value of the table name we're going to get from our serverless YAML file, which is the player points table. So we're going to say table name equals the player points table and then run jest. This is just setting environment variables to run with jest. You can actually use this method to set any other environment variables you want or need inside your jest tests. Now that we run this, we can see we have all three test suites passed and 11 total tests. We can go back to our create player score integration tests and that is great that that next one has succeeded. So now that we've created the create player score integration tests, we're going to create a new file and we're going to test the get player score and we're going to be using again integration tests, so int.test.js. This is going to be very similar to the create player score in terms of format. So I'm going to copy all of the code from the create player score and paste it in. Of course, we're not no longer testing the create player score. So I'm going to change all of the references to create player score to get player score. Get player score integration tests. And inside the get player score tests, the first thing we should say is it should take an ID and return a gateway response. So an ID. So instead of having a body, we're going to have path parameters object with an ID. And we're going to just randomly put in some characters for now. We're then going to get the response. We're going to expect the response to be defined and for it to be validated as being an API gateway response. So that test should work perfectly. I'm going to minimize that. And our next test is then going to be slightly different. So I'm actually going to delete this code so we can create a new test. In this test, we're going to be testing that it should return a 400. It uh, should return 400 if we don't pass an ID. As always, this is an async test. And this time we're going to say const event equals event generator. And unlike in the first test where we passed in a path parameters object, we're not going to pass anything in. Now const res equals await get player score dot handler, passing in the event. And in here, we now expect res.statuscode to be a 400. And a 400 is saying that there's been a user input error. In our case, because we've not passed in a, an ID to the path parameters. If we save this and run the test, remembering to have that table name is the player points. We can now see that we have four passed test suites. So this test suite has passed and we've gone from 11 to 13. In our console logs, we can see there was an error fetching the ID of SDFSD, which is the first test. But in the second test, we never actually get that far and we just get a 400. The next thing we need to do 
is say it should, so create a new test saying it should return a 204 if it is an incorrect ID. So this is going to be very similar to our top one and we're actually going to copy most of the code. So copying the path parameters and the call to our get player score. And now we expect res dot status code to be a 204, which means that it's a successful request but there was no data to return, which is what you would ha expect to happen when you've passed in a junk ID. So we can go into our terminal, run our test again, and then we'll be able to see that we do pass all of these tests. So there you go, now there are 14 tests passed in two and a half seconds. The last test that we have to do is checking that we get a 200 with a response if everything is valid and we use a correct ID. So test returns a 200 and the player data when a valid ID. So this one is a little bit more complicated as there is a bit of setup that we need to do first. The first thing we need to do is create a random ID. So const ID is a string and we can just put in some random characters for there. So that is our ID. Next, we need to create a user. And this user is going to have the ID that we've just defined above. A name of Anna. And a score of 78. So she's got a really good score. And we're going to add her to our database. We need to do this adding of a user to our database so that we know when we request this ID, we're getting back a user with some known data. So we can check that this matches whatever we get from our get player score function. So to do that, we actually need to put it into our database. So await dynamo.write and we need to pass in the user and then the table name, which we can still use as process.env.tableName. So this line of code will write it. What we can also need to do is get dynamo. So at the top of our file, we need to say that const dynamo equals require. This is going to be down to two directories, into lambdas, into the common code, and finally into Dynamo, so that we have direct access to this Dynamo reading and writing from a database, so that we can add this user to our table. Now that we've added the user to a table, we need to create our request. So const event equals event generator and this time we're going to be passing in a path parameters object that is going to have an id and that id is going to reference the same id we created the user with now we're going to be doing a get player score so const res equals await get player score dot handler passing in the event
from this request, we now have a res. And we expect, as we said at the top of this test, to get a 200 and for that to also contain the player data. So expect res.statuscode to be a 200. We're then going to have to pass the body, so const body equals json dot pass the res dot body. Now that we have the body, what we can do is we can say that we expect the body to be to equal an object with user with so the user equals the same user that we used to create in the dynamo right at the top if we now save this file go down to our terminal and run our test again we should see if everything succeeds as we can see we now have all four test suites passing with 15 total tests. In this video, we have looked at integration tests. We have used Jest to set up some integration tests on some of our API endpoints. This is really good because if any of these tests are going to fail in the future, it's because we've made a change in our code which has meant a different response is coming back from our API endpoints. If this is the case, we either need to fix the code so that we are still retaining the same data, or we need to inform the consumers of our API that things are going to change when we deploy this out. This could mean that you need to update your front-end web app or tell other people who use your API that the response data is going to change. If you've learned something new in this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel and helps more developers like yourselves learn about this kind of stuff in serverless. And if you want to see more videos in this productionized serverless series, make sure to subscribe down here and turn on the bell notification so that you get updated when the next video in the series comes out. Thank you and I'll see you again next time.